Practice was protective equipment for high temperatures, a muffle oven, a durometer vickers, equipment for metallographic preparation, a disc cutter, a machine, and a case for our cementation. For the understanding of this pra practice, we are going to uh, introduce you some uh, concept, uh, and we are going to, to show uh, next uh, to facilitate uh, this video. Cementation is used in the industry as a thermal treatment and it's used to harden and increase the strength of metal surfaces but normally it's used in the steel industry. Cementation steels are made by a process where rough iron is packed together in a furnace with charcoal and this type of steel they have a blister appearance and this is because the gas generated during the process. There are three main types of cementation. The first one is box cementation, where the part is inserted inside a stainless steel box surrounded by solid state cement, in this case Karen, and after which the carburetting time is applied. The second one would be the uh, liquid cementation. It cast, uh, cast salts are used, which are always sodium cyanide, and the advantage of this method is that it allows greater control of the penetration and gives more homogeneity in the carburized layer of the the steel that you're doing this process. The third uh, type is the gas cementation, and the, in this part, the the gas the parts are placed in the furnace surrounded by a gaseous atmosphere uh, composed by hydrocarbons. And an, an advantage of this one is that it allows the cement to cement a large number of pieces at one time. The difference between face and micro constituent related to our parts is that the faces are that and the combination of or single states that show the face diagram uh, shown over here. And in the case of steel, it presents the faces of austenite, uh, ferrite, cementite, ferrite plus austenite, austenite plus cementite, and ferrite plus cementite. However, in the micro constituents, there are austenite, ferrite, and cementite in steady state. It could be said that the phasers are constituted by micro constituents. So now I'm going to talk about the type of oven that we, we use in the industry. Uh, the most common oven are the semi, semi cast oven or in Spanish semi mufla the for example this type of oven is uh, the furnace that we have in our lab uh, just consists in just a box that you calibrate the temperature that you want put your pieces and it's, it's very precise but it's more bigger it's it's more expensive, but it's very useful for heat treatments or, or treatment that need uh, a, a type of precision. The other type is the submerger oven that consists in a hole in the ground that are very uh, are always um, turning uh, turn on and just put your your pieces and get down of. Uh, in the hole, and you take advantage of the heat that is all is all here. Uh, the advantage of this type of oven is that uh, it's more little. Uh, we don't need re uh, a really big uh, space for for this oven. Uh, it is more uh, cheap. Uh, is uh, is very useful for cementation and other treatment that don't need a really high precision. To solve the problem, we have a temperature of 930 degrees Celsius that uh, is translated to a 1,203 Kelvin with a steel 1018. Uh, from our tables, we can get that it's a BCC steel, and we got a D0 that is 0.11 uh, centimeters squared over second, and a Q that is 20,900. 
and we get that the CS is the surface by 1% by the problem and the CX will be 0.1% our C initial will be 0.018% because of it's a 1018 steel and we have an 8, 8 hours time so it translates to 28,800 seconds the first step that we get is that we go to our formula is d equal d initial exponents uh, and to the minus q over rt that translating it to by uh, adjusting the data we get that we have a d of 1.1585 times 10 to the minus 7 and afterwards we can get our function of error that would be the adjusting the data that we had before applying over here and we get that the translation of this operation is 0.911 and to get our z from tables we get that our z is 1.2 afterwards we go to the formula of z and we substitute the data that we had the d and the time that we got that we had and we have that we ended up with an x of 0.14 centimeters that is our carburization depth the cementation process is used to make steels with low percentage of carbon more than, to increase the mechanical properties of them one example it's for a piece such as cams or pinions we need the hardness and uh, to be strength so we use cementation process to make the normal um, steel to, to do those kind of um, mechanical properties. In this lab we use steel 1018 and as you can see in the graph I drew a line about 0.18 it's the black line going all the way up and well we cut three pieces which we made different heat treatments to them. Well we started the same for the three pieces. Uh, let's say we started at room temperature which is 25 degrees I want to say and well this is in the ferrite plus perlite phase so we rose the temperature about 900 degrees with the oven. This is the austenite face. And then we dropped the temperature by quenching our three pieces in water. And I want to say it was something about 50 degrees, uh, leaving us back to our ferrite plus perlite area. Then we uh, set aside one piece, leaving two of them. Leaving two of them. And then again, we rose the temperature again. Uh, this time we're aging are two pieces and we rose the temperature to 800 degrees as you can see in the blue line and this is in the ferrite plus austenite area and again we quench our pieces in water dropping back to let's say 50 degrees which is the ferrite plus perlite area and then we set aside one of the pieces leaving only one and with the one left we rose our temperature again uh, or let's say we're aging it and we rose it to 200 uh, but the 200, as you can see in the graph, it's still in the ferrite plus perlite area, so we didn't change faces. We uh, we stayed in the same face as 50 degrees, and well, after we rose the temperature to 200, we drop uh, back to 50 by quenching the last piece with water. So as we as you saw, um, we rose our temperature first to 900 then to 800 and then to 200, always uh, quenching the pieces with water. Afterwards, we analyze the pieces, as my uh, teammates said. So yeah, this is pretty much uh, showing how our pieces change faces during the experiment. We can see the diagram here. First of all, for the cementation process, we need to uh, localize the steel that we're gonna use for this process. Then we have to cut the steel in three pieces, about one centimeter of the thickness, using the disc cutter. Then we have to remove burrs or left over using the bench grinder. Then we have to mark the type of steel using the marker machine. The color we're going to use for the cementation has to be crushed. After crushing the coal, we have to mix with the other substance that we're going to use for the cementation, which is going to be percentage of those are vegetable coal, about 87%. Sodium carbonate it's three percent, barium carbonate twelve percent, and calcium carbonate it's four percent. Once a mixture of substance has been made, um, a lower bed of cementation material is placed in the base of the box. The samples are disposed, leaving enough space between them and covered completely within cementation mixture. Once piece and filling have been accommodated, the lid of the box is sealed with the clay. Then we're going to start the heating of the muffle 
um, in this case we're going to use Electron Open which will be take about 2 hours to, re to research the required temperature in this part um, the following uh, heat treatment that we're going to use is going to be um, our steels in about 900 degrees for 12 hours after this we're going to do the quench in water um, for one piece. The two other halves are going to be heated to the recrystallization temperature for about 800 degrees. This is going to be for about 15 minutes and quench those in the water. Once quenched, turn half in temper for 15 minutes and at 200 degrees. After using the, the beaker micro hardness, we're going to report or a conclusion or what we observe in this in this test and that's going to be the end of the practice as we can see in our results the mechanical properties especially the, the hardness change uh, by the temperatures for example if we analyze the results if we analyze the results of the table at 9900 degrees we can see that we obtain a hardness in, in beakers average of 531.9 hb if we observe uh, the same results of the beakers test in uh, in the temperature of 800 degrees we can see that we really don't have a, a big difference change because we have a, an average of 533.3 uh, hardness beakers HB but if we analyze the results of the last heat treatment that involved the uh, carbonization all the temperatures and the last temperature that is 200 degrees we can observe that our, our hardness increase uh, in a considerable in a considerable way uh, we have we obtain an average of 755.7 hb so uh, this can be inter interpreted of that if we design uh, uh, our alloy um, correctly or heat treatment we can really improve the mechanical properties uh, in this case the hardness of our material in the next tables we show the measures of the diagonals uh, from the beakers test uh, the, the average and the hard, hardness test uh, as we can see uh, in the table in the table some of the results of the hardness test are too big this is because when we do the the test we apply the the force direct directly in in some grain uh, also, this could occur because some vibration in the la laboratory could occur. As we can see, the data are arranged uh, from top to bottom, uh, depending on the distance from the edge the, of the material, uh, each 50 micrometers. For the comparison of the three probes, uh, we are going to show a graphic. Uh, this, this, is, this graphic is compound by the distance from the edge to the center and the, the hardness speakers. Uh, we can see that the hardness, hardness decreases each time because the distance is closer to the center. Uh, from this we can con conclude that the hardness, hardness obtained uh, when it's closer to the edge is more higher than the hardness in the center this is because the carbon carbon that we spread on our material. our steel 1018 for our heat treatment at 900 degrees celsius we got a grain size of 6 and for the heat treatment at 800 degrees celsius we had a grain size of 5 and for the last uh, heat treatment of 200 degrees Celsius, we had a, a grain size of 6. So this gives the main uh, 
advantage that at our heat treatments we started decreasing our grain size so we started to have uh, better uh, mechanical properties, uh, toughness and also that for our uh, last heat treatment we returned to the first one but with a, a slight improvement. This practice was really useful to know the cementation in steels and to know how the, it, it behaves under the microstructure of the material and how the temperature, the heat treatments affect and enhance the, its properties. The collision cementation process is really useful for uh, different applications because we can transform a normal steel with a low percentage of carbon into more hardness, uh, more hardness or uh, toughness um, steel. As after finished the practice, we could see by the microscope the difference in the um, in the micro microstructures, and we see um, a really different structure, which is going to be better for. In this practice, we. We do a uh, cementation and, and we apply some knowledge uh, that we uh, learn in, in, in the course. Um, also, I learned how to do a cementation, how to care about it, and the compositions that needs to be in, in a cementation. Uh, it's rewarding for me. Apply the knowledge learned in class. In labs, I like applying the knowledge of class. And what I liked about this lab is that I got to experience how to make um, thermal treatment on steels. And I also found this interesting because we might apply it for our final project. My conclusion of this practice is that if we learn how to make correctly the heat treatments, we can improve the mechanical properties for our convenience but we have to learn how to do the, the heat treatments of one way that we, we can design exactly our alloy and, the, and choose correctly the temperatures uh, that, that in, in one way that we can improve these, these properties and not just make a waste of money and time.